Okay, so without using a calculator, could you get this problem right? Well, if you can get this problem right, that means that you have a pretty solid footing in some really important basic math concepts and skills. Let's go ahead and take a look at the problem here. We have 12 minus 14 times 2 plus 3 minus 19 plus negative of a negative 7. Okay, so again, if you can do this problem, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the right answer in just one second. Then I'm going to walk through the solution step by step. And we're going to be talking about two primary skills uh, that you need to really understand in order to do this problem without the aid of a calculator. So put that calculator away. All you need for this particular problem is this supercomputer. It resides right up here, right in between your ears. This is so much better than any artificial intelligence they're coming out with. Matter of fact, that's actual intelligence that will always beat AI in my opinion. Okay, now before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And uh, it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go to take a look at the answer. Again, 12 minus 14 times 2 plus 3 minus 19 plus a negative of a negative 7. What is this all equal to? Well, if you did this right, you would have come up with negative 25. All right, so how'd you do? Well, hopefully, you, in fact, uh, this was an easy problem. And if you got this right, let's give you a happy face, an A plus, a 100%, and multiple stars. So you could brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of the order of operations and positive and negative numbers. Because this is uh, the two kind of primary concepts. Now, I'm going to assume that you know how to do basic addition and subtraction. But when it comes to positive and negative numbers, maybe some of this bothered you. But uh, no big deal. I'm going to explain all the aspects uh, to this problem right now. Okay, so the uh, two big skills, uh, again, I'm assuming that you know what 5 plus 3 is, just basic number operations. Uh, now, again, we're not using our calculator here. Now, we could type this onto our calculator, and of course, it would give us the right answer. But uh, there's two things that we want to keep in mind for this particular problem. The first is the order of operations, which is often referred to by this little acronym PEMDAS. Okay, I'll explain that in a second. And the second thing is we need to understand the rules for positive and negative numbers, okay? Because we are dealing with negative numbers and positive, negative, no, positive numbers. We need to know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide positive and negative numbers. And in this particular problem, we have various operations going on here. So in mathematics, a mathematical operation is addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and even powers. Okay, So we need to know the correct order of operations. And uh, let's just quickly, quickly review this PEMDAS here real quick. And then we'll talk about positive and negative numbers in just one second. So P stands for parentheses. So we're going to look to see if there's anything in parentheses. Now, we do have some parentheses here, but there's nothing to do inside of them. Okay, so In other words, it's not like parentheses 7 plus 8. So this P stands for parentheses, but it also uh, is really talking about grouping symbols. If you see brackets like this or little squiggly things like that, you're going to go there first. Okay, So this particular problem, we do not really have parentheses in the sense that there's something to do inside of those parentheses. Now, E... You could think of that as powers, okay? So if you have something like 2 to the third power, that's what the E stands for. So some of you might be saying, why don't they just call that powers? Well, when you have a power, this little number up in the top right is called the exponent. So really that means exponent. This bottom number down here is called the base. This entire thing is called the power. Now, M and D stands for multiplication and division, and A and S is addition and subtraction. Now, this checklist I've kind of uh, uh, failed to state right up front. It goes from left to right. Okay, so let me make that uh, uh, clear right now. So we're going from left to right on this checklist. So again, we're going to start with parentheses. If there's no parentheses, we're going to move on to all the powers that we see. And then the M and D part is probably one of the most confused parts of the order of operations. So most people think, oh, you're going to do multiplication, then uh, division. 
That's not the case. It's multiplication or division, whatever you see first from left to right. So if you see division and then multiplication, you're going to do it in this order. Okay, division, then multiplication. Same way with addition and subtraction. It's whatever you see first from left to right. Okay, so just a quick, quick review on the order of operations in PEMDAS. Because in this particular problem here, you can see that we are dealing with different operations. Okay, so anytime we have multiple operations, in other words, this is multiplication right here, here is addition, here is subtraction, we need to keep PEMDAS in mind. All right, and now the next thing we need to keep in mind is how do we deal with positive and negative numbers, okay? Let's do a quick crash course on how to deal with positive and negative numbers. Here are the rules. Uh, it's very, very simple. The way I like to teach this is this. Uh, when we're dealing with positive and negative numbers, you can kind of think of this as two kind of separate rules. Okay, now this is typically the way it's not taught, but I think this is an easier way to think about it. So uh, the one rule has to deal with multiplication and division of positive and negative numbers. This is super easy. If the signs are the same, a negative times a negative, or a positive times a positive, if the signs are the same, the answer is positive. If the signs are uh, different, a negative times a positive, this type of thing, or and the same thing with division, a negative divided by a positive, the answer will be negative. I'll show you a couple of quick examples here in a second. So this right here, this covers two out of the four operations we need to know. So this is super easy. You were already 50% there, uh, you know, uh, for you know understanding this completely, right? So super easy, but easy to confuse as well. Okay, now adding and subtracting positive and negative numbers is basically one rule. Okay, we're going to actually take subtraction problems, uh, subtraction problems, and turn them into addition problems. So if you know how to add positive and negative numbers, then you, we will be good to go. Okay, and I'm going to show you that in a second. And you can see here that I want you to think about money when it comes to adding and subtracting positive and negative numbers. And you might be saying, what is this guy talking about? Well, let's go ahead and see what I'm talking about right now. Okay, so again, uh, these are the basic rules that we need to understand when we're dealing with a problem like this. Let's go ahead and quickly look at some examples for multiplication and division, and then I'll uh, uh, kind of go over here for addition and subtraction. All right, so as I indicated, if the signs are different, the answer will be negative. Okay, and this is the case with both multiplication and division. It's the same rule. So here we have a negative times a positive. So we just multiply the numbers, the negative and the positive, it's going to be a negative. Okay, our final answer. So three times two, uh, negative three times positive two, negative six. Here we have a negative divided by negative. Signs are the same. So our answer is positive. Okay, if this was a negative 10 times negative two, signs are the same. Answer is positive, right? So that would be positive 20 in that case. Now, uh, this situation right here is one we need to understand and one's gonna, one that's going to be applicable in this problem. What is a negative times a negative, right? Well, negative times a negative, it's the signs are the same, so our answer is positive. But sometimes you'll see it written like this, the uh, negative of a negative 3 or a negative of a negative value. Uh, we, uh, again, it, we do have this situation in this particular problem. One way you could think of this is the opposite of negative 3 is a positive three. So if you understand these you know, uh, situations, then again, you should not have difficulty when it comes to multiplying, dividing, or seeing a negative of a negative number uh, when we're dealing with positive and negative number situations. All right, now let's go and talk about adding and subtracting. Uh, and again, I did mention, all you wanna be thinking about here is money. This is a very good model to remember how to add positive and negative numbers. Okay, so positive numbers is like you have money in your pocket or in your bank account. You actually have money, okay? So that's a pretty cool thing. Negative numbers is just uh, the opposite. It's you owe money. It's uh, where you have debt, okay? So positive uh, numbers is uh, or positive values is like you have money. Negative values is like you owe someone money. That's a bill. That's a debt you have to pay. So if we kind of think about uh, this model, we can um, figure these situations out. Let's take a look at some examples here. So negative 12 plus 10, all right? Now the answer is negative two, but let's see what's going on here. Well, negative 12 is, boy, I owe somebody $12, or I have $12 in debt. 
Now, would you rather have no money or would you rather have uh, $12 in debt? Okay, which one is, uh, who has less money? Okay, let's just talk about this real quick. Somebody over here has no money, but they don't have any debt. This person has negative 12, right? Means that they have less than no money. They actually owe $12. They'd have to pay $12 to get back to zero, okay? So negative values are less than zero. So here you owe someone $12, but then you go and you work and you get $10 into your bank account, okay? So you pay that person $10, but you still owe them $2. So this simple example, negative 12 plus 10 is equal to negative two. Okay, we still have greater debt than the amount of money we have. Let's take a look at this uh, example right here, negative three plus negative four. Well, this is not good, right? Uh, we owe uh, this one person, this one friend of ours, $3 for lunch that we borrowed. And we're like, oh, they're like, hey, remember that $3 I gave you the other day for lunch? Well, we owe them that. And now your other friend's saying, hey, give me my $4 back. Uh, you know, I gave that to you last week for lunch. So now you owe not only $3, you owe $4. So total, your total debt is seven. So negative three plus negative four is negative seven. Okay. All right. So as promised, I did state that we're going to take subtraction problems and turn them into addition problems. So let's take a look at this example, five minus eight. So what we're going to do is this thing called plus negative. We're going to take this subtraction operator and we're going to turn it into an addition addition operator. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a negative value to the number to the right of that subtraction operator. Let me do this again. So five minus eight is going to be five plus negative eight. So now we have a new problem, five plus negative eight. And with our new understanding of uh, money to help us solve these problems, this is what I have $5, but I owe someone $8. So I give that person, they're like, Hey, give me my $8 back. Well, I'll give you $5 and I still owe you $3. So five plus negative eight is $3. Okay, so this is a crash course on the rules for positive and negative numbers. And of course, we went over the order of operations as well. Now we have everything we need to know in order to do this problem. But there's one thing that I would love for you to do before we actually start doing this problem, and that is to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification uh, bell. You have no idea of the positive impact each one of you have when you do this. Okay, This is not a little thing. I've been on YouTube for uh, many years, and it's taken me some time to grow my channel, probably because it's taken me some time to make 2,000 plus math videos. But uh, YouTube is a great platform for me to teach math. I'm obsessed with teaching math because, unfortunately, oftentimes math is taught in an overly technical way. I try to teach math in a very clear and understandable way to help people out. There's so many people that struggle in mathematics, but on my channel, you'll see videos from basic math to advanced math like calculus and everything in between. So doing this little uh, uh, act right there really does put a smile on my face. Okay, back to the problem. So here is the situation. We have the, a problem. Now we're like, okay, I got my order of operations, my positive and negative number skills. What do I need to be thinking about first? Well, let's just kind of write up here our PEMDAS, just so we don't forget, P-E-M-D-A-S. Now, you don't have to write this out every time we're doing a problem, but it's a good little mental checklist. So, all right, P, do I see any parentheses? Yes, but there's nothing to do inside of those parentheses. Uh, so let's move on to E. Okay, are there any powers? Nope, no powers. Is there any multiplication and division? Yes. Okay, so this is multiplication, and this right here technically is multiplication too, because this is like a negative right here. Also, you can think of this as a negative one times a negative seven, a negative of a negative. So this is going to be our, our starting points, and we're going to kind of do this from left to right, but you would actually uh, not harm the problem by doing uh, these two parts of the problem simultaneously. So that's what we're going to do right now. So we have a negative 14 times a positive 2. Negative times a positive is negative, right? We just talked about that. Negative times a positive is negative. So that's going to give us a negative 28. And then the opposite of a negative 7 or a negative of a negative 7 or, or, or a negative times a negative is going to be uh, the, the signs are the same, going to be a positive 7, right? So again, I just went through all the skills we need in order to do this problem. Okay, so here is the situation. 
we have 12 plus negative 28 plus 3 minus 19 uh, plus 7. Now, uh, there's a couple of different um, ways we can finish this problem up. It's going to give us to the, uh, get us to the same solution. So let's take a look at the operations we have. Here we have addition. Here we have addition. Here we have addition. But this right here is subtraction. So as I indicated, it's not a bad idea to change subtraction uh, situations into addition situations. So let's go ahead and handle that right now. So this would be 3 minus 19. So we're going to just turn this into that plus negative situation. So now we have all addition. Okay, so every, all these operations are addition. And when it comes to adding numbers here, okay, uh, in mathematics, order doesn't make a difference. So in other words, if I had 1 plus 2 plus 5, I can add this up as 2 plus 5 plus 1. You're still going to get the same answer. So here, I can really kind of add uh, up uh, these um, numbers in any way I want. But we'll just kind of break them up in groups. Uh, that's the best way. You don't want to try to do all this uh, at once. So kind of do things in little groups like this. Matter of fact, let me erase this work here. Okay, so here we have 12 plus uh, negative uh, 28. You could do this in any other. Um, it doesn't have to be in this particular uh, grouping. You could do this in any number of different ways, but I'm going to do it this way. So 12 plus negative 28. Again, I'm working from left to right, but it's not. it doesn't um, have to be the case to work from left to right. So 12 plus negative 28. Again, we're thinking money, right? So I owe $28. I only have $12. So I'm going to subtract these two, okay? And that's going to be my difference. That's going to be negative 16, all right? So here I have 3 plus negative 19. I owe more than I have. So this is going to be negative 16 as well, plus 7. So here I have a negative 16 plus a negative 16, that's a good opportunity to just add those up because I'm like, oh yes, I know what um, 16 and 16 are. That's 32, right? Or 16 plus 16, 16 is 32. So this is a good opportunity to just add these numbers. Now, again, you could go negative 16 plus 7, uh, go in that a particular manner. But here, I'm just going to add these up and I'm going to get negative 32 plus 7. And then when I do this final math right here, negative 32 plus 7, you end up with a negative 25. Okay, so again, a problem like this seems, you know, somewhat pretty easy, you know, when you're looking at it, you know, like right from the get-go, you're like, all right, this doesn't seem too difficult. It's not like it's, you know, advanced algebra or, or calculus or something like that. But here's the thing, right? You absolutely need to have these basic math skills down, right? You know, positive, negative numbers, order of operations, and kind of um, even more importantly, a uh, management of the problem. Remember, you're telling a story from the problem to the solution. So you want to take, you know, one or two, at most two steps, um, you know, any one step you take when you're solving a math problem, you typically want to just take one step, okay? Sometimes you could take two depending on the problem, but you never want to take three or four and just kind of, you know, tell the story from, from problem to solution without really, you know, uh, describing what's going on. It's like basically telling a story like once upon a time, the end. <laughs> Your teacher's not going to like that, right? Here is the problem. Here is the answer. And uh, teacher, you figure out how I got from here to here. Okay, so get in the habit of being neat and structured. Now, if you need help with this level of mathematics, uh, check out my Math Foundations course. Uh, you'll find a link to that in the description of this uh, video. It's a great little mini course for those of you that want to kind of uh, have a little uh, boot camp, if you will, uh, for basic mathematics. So I go through positive and negative numbers, fractions, order of operations. That's a great kind of starter course for this level of math. But uh, I also have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel as well. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.